Did you ever think that an American literary giant could be so darn depressing? When I finished reading The Lowest Animal for the first time, it took me a while to figure out what I was going to do for a video. Honestly, it was so bleak that I thought about just sending you a video of a bunch of kittens playing or something, but I think there's a lot we can talk about here, including why he hates Frenchmen and why everyone hates Frenchmen. Hmm. It is true that Twain was far from an optimist, but this isn't really just the rantings of somebody who hates everybody. It is still very much a parody, very much a satire. You can do satires that make very devastating points, but this is what Twain was doing here. We know satires. The Onion is probably one of the best places to get them in our current landscape. Wealthy teen nearly experiences consequences. It's funny, but you know the truth of this because whenever a wealthy kid ends up getting caught doing something, they get off. And another, students without internet access to attend remotely by peering through home window of wealthier classmate. Again, there's a real amount of reality here. Because, well, you know, everybody doesn't have the same income, so they don't have the same facilities for education. And when we're in the middle of a pandemic, what else are you going to do for education? Between us parodying many things. One, Darwinism. The idea that we're constantly getting better and better. Remember, this was a lot newer for Twain than it is for us. He's also parodying patriotism. People who love America so much they wave flags and dress up in the colors. And his statement on this, pretty harsh, but truth to it, patriotism contemplates the opposite of a common brotherhood. Because if humans are all equal, why are we celebrating our country so much? He's obviously trashing on wealth. Many men who have accumulated more millions of money than they ever use have shown a rabid hunger for more. Is he a big fan of the church? Well, the church sometimes ties into money, but it also ties into an outlet for hatred. He is the only animal that loves his neighbor as himself and cuts his throat if his theology isn't straight. And Twain also bagged on the French. Seriously, this is one I don't really understand, because without the French, we wouldn't have baguettes. I mean, really, would you be willing to give up that trade? Not me. Anyway, the question after seeing Twain bag on all these things is, does he think that we're just evil? I'm not talking about evil in the way left-handed people are evil but general evilness. How can we come up with a theory that explains how the world is the way it is without putting it down to people just suck? Well, luckily, we have philosophers coming to our rescue. That's right. And I'm not going to go too deep into philosophy because it's not my job, but philosophy can be a really useful tool when you're writing, so we should at least uh, touch on it. The following descriptions I all got from a very magnificent book that I highly recommend, How to Invent Everything, A Survival Guide for the Stranded Time Traveler. It's awesome, and it basically explains all the basics you would need to start a new society, including how to start first aid, how to start uh, building things, how to start chemistry, how to start civilization in every way. And their section on philosophy manages to explain a bunch of different philosophies, all in terms of the high five. Really. I'm going to go through a few of them, not all of them, just to give you a basic idea. Positivism basically equates to, if you want me to believe in high fives, I'm going to need to see some scientific evidence. Positivism wants everything to be verifiable. Stoicism. 
Emotions can result in errors of judgment that interfere with clear, unbiased thinking. Therefore, the best high fives are those given out for extremely logical reasons. Stoicism is undergoing a little bit of a comeback lately. It professes to give us a way to not get caught in our emotions because they think we're way too emotional people, and that stops us from seeing the world as it is. We need to downplay our emotions and apply more logic. It's the philosophy of Spock. Utilitarianism. You probably remember this one from the video on the trolley problem. Anything, no matter how horrible, that brings the greatest number of high fives to the greatest number of people is justified. Nihilism. Nothing, not even high fives, has meaning. Existentialism, which is basically the philosophy of poetry types. Nothing, not even high fives, has any meaning, so it's up to the individual to give them whatever meaning they can by both handing out and receiving high fives as authentically as possible. And secular humanism. There are no gods to high five us, but we can still be kind, and we can still high five each other. Now, what's the point in going through these different philosophies? These little descriptions aren't going to give you a good enough base of knowledge to really get into analysis. If one of them seems similar to how you see the world, you can study that philosophy in a bit more depth and use that as a critical lens to look at how the world works. This is an advanced feature of argument. But there's a difference between looking at a subject from a stoic point of view than from a nihilistic point of view. Just like there's a difference from looking at, say, professional wrestling from the standpoint of economics, is there is looking at it by the standpoint of theater. Different critical lenses allow you to come to different readings. After all, if you have a doctor and a psychic look at you, they're not going to come at your maladies from the same angle, are they? And this is particularly important for our purposes because. Critical approaches, critical lenses, philosophical or otherwise, are one of the things that we can use to help put our arguments on a higher level. Critical lenses are very important for scholarly writing. It lets us know not only what the point of view is of the person who's doing the essay, it also lets us know what the point of view of their field is. And it, people from different fields will always look at stuff a little bit differently. So, it's a good thing to explore a lot of fields to figure out where your particular approach is suited best. That's why we have a liberal arts education. We want you to be exposed to a lot of different ways of thinking about things. And you'll find that it helps you see stuff from a lot of different perspectives. See you in the next video.